Imagine digging up a fossil so strange, so confusing, that even the scientists studying it couldn't tell which side was the head and which side was the tail. A creature so weird that for more than a century, experts argued about what it even was. A worm? A shrimp? A caterpillar with armor? Or some evolutionary prank that nature never repeated? This is the story of Hallucigenia, a creature so bizarre that it took decades of scientific mistakes and technological breakthroughs to finally understand what it actually looked like and how it lived. Today, we're diving into the strange world of the Cambrian Seas and the extraordinary mystery of the creature scientists called a hallucination. The story begins in the early 1900s, in the Burgess Shale of the Canadian Rockies, one of the richest fossil beds on Earth. These rocks preserved the first explosion of complex life, dating back over 508 million years, a time when evolution was experimenting wildly with body shapes it would never use again. And buried inside this treasure trove was a fossil that looked like absolutely nothing else. It was a tiny worm-like creature, barely three to five centimeters long, it had a row of hard, conical spikes on one side and soft, noodle-like legs on the other. But the real problem was this. Scientists couldn't tell which was the top, or the bottom, or the head, or the butt. In 1911, its discoverer, Charles Woolcott, simply described it as a worm fragment and moved on. For decades, no one touched it again. Until the 1970s, when British paleontologist Simon Conway Morris decided to take a closer look. And what he produced would go down as one of the most famous scientific misinterpretations in paleontology. Conway Morris flipped the fossil upside down. He assumed the spikes were legs, and the legs were tentacles. He thought the soft, flexible limbs were dangling feelers the animal used to walk on the seafloor, and he couldn't find a head so he decided it simply didn't have one. He published the reconstruction and the world saw it. A thin, worm-like creature walking on tall, stiff spikes like a nightmarish upside-down centipede. It looked so psychedelic, so unreal, that he named it Hallucigenia because it resembled a hallucination. And for years, that was the accepted image. But there was just one problem. It was completely wrong. The original Hallucigenia interpretation became famous, but not because it made sense. It became famous because it didn't. Paleontologists across the world stared at the drawing and quietly muttered the same thing. There's no way this is right. First, walking on tall spikes made absolutely no biological sense. Spikes are terrible legs. They can't bend, can't grip, and would snap instantly. Second, the soft limbs dangling from the top would have been vulnerable to predators, sand, and debris. And third, the animal had no visible head. Conway Morris's version showed it ending in a smooth tube, with no eyes, no mouth, nothing. But science hates loose ends. And in the 1990s, a new generation of researchers decided to take another look at hallucigenia, this time with better tools, better fossils, and a healthier dose of skepticism. And that's when everything flipped, literally. When scientists examined newly discovered fossils, something stood out immediately. Those soft tentacles Conway Morris put on the top. They had claws on the ends, real, biological claws, the kind animals use to grip and walk. Suddenly, it became obvious. Those were the legs, the spikes were the armor, and the entire animal had been reconstructed upside down. Imagine someone finding a bird skeleton for the first time, but placing the wings on the legs and the legs on the head. That's how far off the original reconstruction was. When Hallucigenia was flipped upright, everything made more sense. The animal crawled on soft, flexible legs ending in claws. The spikes pointed upward, protecting it from predators. The head and mouth 
which had been misidentified, were finally located. But even then, the creature wasn't done surprising scientists. Because the real head of Hallucigenia turned out to be just as weird as the rest of its body. In 2015, using advanced electron microscopy, researchers finally produced the highest resolution images ever taken of Hallucigenia's head. And what they saw shocked them. This tiny, worm-like creature had a mouth ringed with a circle of needle-like teeth, a throat lined with even more teeth, forming a macabre conveyor belt leading inside its body. Simple, dot-like eyes on a bulbous head. In other words, the animal didn't just look strange. Its head belonged in a cosmic horror illustration. Those teeth likely helped Hallucigenia suck up mushy food from the seafloor, scraping up algae, organic debris, and maybe even bacterial mats. The internal throat teeth ensured prey could go in, but not back out. It was simple, efficient, and extremely creepy. Even today, Hallucigenia has one of the strangest feeding mechanisms in the fossil record. Despite its bizarre appearance, Hallucigenia has a very important place in evolutionary history. It belongs to a group called the Lobopodians, soft-bodied animals with stubby legs, many of which lived during the Cambrian period. And here's the part that blows paleontologists' minds. Hallucigenia is probably an early relative of modern velvet worms and arthropods. That means insects, spiders, crabs, lobsters, and countless other creatures share distant ancestry with this weird little spike-backed worm. So while it may look like an evolutionary joke, its family tree is one of the most successful of all time. Now imagine being Hallucigenia, crawling slowly across the seafloor more than 500 million years ago. The ocean you live in is packed with some of the strangest and most dangerous creatures evolution has ever produced. You share the water with Anomalocaris, one of the earliest large predators. It had rotating mouthparts shaped like a pineapple slice and two powerful front arms for grabbing prey. For anything small and soft-bodied, Anomalocaris was a nightmare. Then there's Opabinia, another bizarre animal with five eyes arranged on top of its head and a long, tube-like snout ending in a claw. It used that flexible proboscis to reach into the sand or grab tiny creatures. You'd also encounter Wywaxia, a slow-moving animal covered with overlapping scales and long, sharp spines. It wasn't a predator, but it was heavily armored to survive in this dangerous ecosystem. The ocean was full of strange, evolving species, all trying to survive and avoid becoming someone else's meal. Hallucigenia eventually disappeared as the Cambrian era gave way to more complex ecosystems. Lobopodians like Hallucigenia faded out, replaced by more advanced arthropods with jointed legs, shells, and better sensory organs. In other words, Hallucigenia disappeared because other animals evolved better body structures. Over millions of years, they became modern arthropods, including spiders. Spiders and Hallucigenia are separated by more than 500 million years, yet they share some strange similarities that most people don't realize. Hallucigenia had clawed legs at the end of its stubby limbs. Modern spiders also have tiny claw tips at the end of each leg to grip webs and surfaces. Hallucigenia had a ring of teeth around its mouth and more teeth lining its throat. Spiders don't have the same structure, but they have fang-like mouthparts that fold and unfold in a very Hallucigenia-like way. And the weirdest part, Hallucigenia belonged to the same ancient branch that eventually produced spiders and ticks. That means when you look at a spider, you're looking at a highly advanced version of the same evolutionary template that Hallucigenia started. And once you know that, spiders start to feel a little more unsettling. Because deep down, underneath all the evolution, the creature crawling on your wall shares a tiny piece of DNA history with a half-billion-year-old worm that had spikes on its back and a mouth full of teeth. If you want to see more videos about prehistoric creatures and the strange life forms that came before us, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.